All right. It's great to see everybody here this morning. So, we're here for a few reasons today. We have a very special, a couple very special guests. We have Dr. Thomas Stevens. Uh, or, I'm sorry, Dr. Thomas Butler. Oh, from, we <laughs> I combined. One. Yeah, Dr. Thomas Butler from, from Crozier Health and uh, Miss Margaret Stevens as well. Um, who are guests are going to talk about a special summer program we have for everybody. Um, before we do that though, um, I have some important updates and reminders for ninth grade. Um, Leander, come on up to the front, my man. No, don't want to miss anything. Um, we have some important reminders and updates for ninth grade, okay? We're halfway through the school year. You're one semester into your high school career, right? Some of us are off to a fantastic start and some of us are not, all right? So it's a really important time for us to kind of kind of look at where we're at um, and set some goals, make sure that, that if we need to change course, that, that we do that. So we're gonna talk about that. We're also gonna talk about some upcoming events. So I wanna make sure we all, um, we're all ready. Let's make sure that we remember to uh, show respect, take accountability, engage in learning, and be mindful at all times. Now, we are here. We just finished our second week. We're now in our third week back after our extended winter break. All right. And I know most of us, if not all of us, are happy to be back. Um, and this is where we need to be. We know that students learn best in the classroom. We know that teachers teach best in the classroom. Um, and we know that we like to be in school, around our friends, with our teachers, most of our teachers probably, if not all of our teachers. Um, but we all have to work together to make sure that we stay here from now until the end of the year. We're gonna talk about some exciting spring events that we have here at STEM, um, that we need everyone to cooperate in order for them to happen. We know if a lot of students start getting sick that we know what happens, all right? We don't want that to happen, so we all have to work together and make sure we're doing these things, these important things, so that we can have our events, that we can be in class, we can be in school. So make sure, um, I know a lot of you, when I see you, I see you pull your mask up over your nose because you know I'm about to say it, right? We need to make sure that we're doing that at all times. We need to make sure our mask is up over our nose. We have a mask on, right? So that we are uh, protecting ourselves and others. We need to make sure we're washing and sanitizing our hands as much as possible. We need to make sure if we, if we don't feel well, that we stay at home, okay? Um, one of the good things that's happened over the last couple of years, we can stay connected with our teachers. We can still check Google Classroom. We can still get our work done. We can still email our teachers. If we are sick, and, and I know that's happened to some of us here, we've had to stay home for a couple of days or a couple of weeks, right? It's, it's not what we want to do, but that's better than the alternative, which is to come into school and make other people sick. So please stay home if you're sick. And the final thing, um, who's vaccinated? How many of you are vaccinated? Okay, this actually might be the most hands of any of our groups, which is a great thing. Um, you look around the room, if you're not vaccinated, you see people raise their hands, right? They have two arms, they have one head, they, nothing crazy has happened to people who are getting vaccinated. It is dangerous not to be vaccinated. It is safe to be vaccinated. We want as many of our students as possible, if you're not yet vaccinated, to get your shots, okay? The more of us who are vaccinated, who have gotten our shots, the safer we'll be and the more likely it is that we're gonna stay here, we're gonna have in-person school, we're gonna have our spring events. Those of you guys who are playing sports in the winter or the springtime, our winter sports had to miss some games. We don't wanna miss any games. We don't wanna miss any spring sports. We don't wanna miss any spring events. So please, if you haven't gotten vaccinated, do so. And we're gonna to try to make it as easy as possible. We had some, um, I don't know if anyone in this room, but we had some students get vaccinated during parent-teacher conferences last week. This week, tomorrow at Stetzer Elementary at two o'clock or at Toby Farms at two o'clock on Friday, you can go and get vaccinated. This flyer with the link to sign up is in your ninth grade Google Classroom page. Um, you can go there, you can, you can send it to, uh, to mom or dad. 
to click. It's very easy to sign up. It's also in the newsletter that your parents get from me, this uh, link to sign up. So this, this Thursday at Stetzer, this Friday at Toby, next week on Thursday at Chester High, and next Friday, right here back at STEM, is another vaccination clinic. So if you need your first shot, your second shot, your booster shot, all of those are available. It's free. You're already here, right? It's right here in the district. Um, all you have to do is sign up. So please, if you haven't gotten your shot, get your shot. Please, if you have gotten your shot, but your friends haven't gotten your shots, let them know, right? You're fine. It's good. You might feel a little under the weather for a day, but it's better than um, being unvaccinated. All right, it's February. The first semester is over, um, which brings me to my next point, which is your GPA. This is what I really want to talk about with the ninth grade before we get to our guests. What is a GPA? Who can tell me what a grade point average, or I already answered the question. What's a grade point average? What does it mean? I'm sorry. Who can talk to us about your GPA? Najee. We talked about GPA. What is, what is, why is it important? What is it? Okay. So at the end of ninth grade, what happens to your GPA when you go into 10th grade? Does it go away? Do you start fresh? No. No, you don't. After ninth grade, the grades that you get this year are going to stay on your transcript. They're going to stay on your transcript in 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade. It's not like middle school. If you've got a bunch of D minuses in 7th grade, you still passed. You went to 8th grade, and all those grades were gone. Nobody remembered them except for you and probably your mom, right? Definitely. <laughs> now, in ninth grade, the grades that you're getting now, the grades that you already got in the first semester are staying on your transcript. So when you apply to college in three years, a little less than three years, um, those college admissions counselors who are gonna decide if you get in and the, the, um, the scholarship committees that are going to decide if you get that $5,000 or $10,000 scholarship or full ride scholarship, they're going to see your grades from ninth grade, right? So, how many people know what their GPA is? That's good. That's more than last time. One, two, three, four. That's good. It's not as good as it should be, though. It should be every single hand. So this is what you're gonna do before the end of the day today. Before the end of the day today, because I'm gonna ask any ninth graders that I see before the end of the day today what their GPA is. You're gonna go on Home Access Center. You're gonna sign in. You're gonna to go to the report card. It's under grades on the top. That's one of the tabs. You check classes to check your, your, your averages and the classes that you're in now. You check grades and you see your report card from the second quarter, all right? On that report card, you will find your GPA, right? If it's 3.0 or higher, you're off to a good start. If it's lower than 3.0, you have some work to do, okay? So you're gonna check your GPA, you're gonna know what it is, so that if I stop you in the hallway and I say, Francisco, what's your GPA? You're gonna be able to answer me, right? So that's number one. Then the second thing you're gonna do is, you're gonna set a goal for the second semester. If your GPA is below 3.0, you need to set a goal of having a GPA of higher than 3.0 in the second semester. It's really important. It's really important. Even though we just said your GPA is gonna stay with you all four years, you're still in the beginning of high school. You have time to, you have time to fix it if you got off to a bad start, but you can't wait any longer. So you're gonna, you're gonna check that GPA before the end of the day today, and you're gonna set a goal. If your GPA is already over 3.0, you're off to a good start. If you got a 3.5, set a goal like 3.7, get it up a little bit higher, all right? But we all need to know what it is and set a goal before the end of the day today. Got it? Got it. 
Can't wait to ask you. Deshaun, what, what am I going to ask you this, uh, this afternoon? What is your GPA? And are you going to know the answer? Okay. Do you know the answer now? No. Okay. So you got some work to do. All right. We also have some other events coming up for, not for the, you guys aren't in the middle school, you guys are in ninth grade. Anyone signed up for the STEM showcase on March 2nd? I can't wait for the March 2nd STEM showcase. If you're a singer, performer, dancer, if you have talent that you want to put on display, we still have a few more spots, maybe like two more spots in the STEM showcase. We would love to see some ninth grade performers. Um, Isaac, what's that? Can can you rap in the show? You can rap in the show. We just we gotta we gotta check the message of, of the rap. Um, you, I want you to talk to Mr. Wilkins to that. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Talk to Mr. Wilkins. So if you are interested, if you are interested in performing in the STEM showcase on March second, before what is hopefully a packed auditorium, live stream, then make sure you talk to Miss Wright and or Mr. Wilkins today, okay? We also have the oratorical contest coming up on March 31st. If singing or dancing and performing isn't really your thing, but you do excel at speaking in front of crowds like I'm doing right now, um, a few uh, recent graduate, a graduate of STEM a few years ago was able to travel to Texas as a national finalist in the oratorical contest. So that's something to think about. Um, if you're interested in that, I want you to talk to Mr. Staples. If you don't know Mr. Staples yet, you can talk to me and I'll introduce you if you're interested in the oratorical contest. Um, in April and May, we're gonna be talking about course selection. We're gonna be talking about course selection. You don't have a whole lot of choice about the classes that you get in ninth grade. And some of you might not be really thrilled and happy with all of your classes that you have right now or that you had in the first semester. You have more choice for 10th grade. So I want you, you'll have, you'll get more information, but I want you to be thinking about that and preparing for course selection coming up in the springtime. Also in the springtime is a fashion show. I don't think any of you ninth graders were here the last time we had our fashion show, uh, which was canceled because of COVID the last couple of years. However, um, it's a fun and exciting event that's coming up in the springtime that you should, that should be on your radar if that's something that you're interested in, more information will be coming. And then the final thing, the final upcoming event that I want to talk about today is from June 27th to June 30th. After we're done for the school year, after we're done for the school year, um, at Crozier Health, Dr. Dr. Butler's going to talk more about the program. Um, this is especially important if you are considering a career as a doctor or a nurse or any science, technology, engineering, or math type career. This is a great program to get involved with. So Dr. Butler will talk more about that in just a minute. So let me introduce our special guest, Thomas, uh, Dr. Thomas Butler. He is a multi-organ abdominal transplant hepatobiliary and robotic surgeon at Crozier Health. He is a clinical associate professor of surgery at Drexel College of Medicine. He's associate program director at Crozier Health General Surgery Residency and surgery clerkship director, director at Drexel University, Temple University, and Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine. So please welcome our special guest, Dr. Thomas. I am here basically to talk to you guys about a program that we're going to do over at the hospital for a week. The purpose of that program is because only about three to five percent of physicians look like me, minority. So not enough of you guys are getting into the STEM fields. And so this is an opportunity for me to expose you guys to what we do at the hospital, to what we do in science in general, and allow you to have some experience in what happens in STEM. Can you, you guys probably can, I couldn't even read it over here, probably. Can you guys name anybody in that picture? Joe Biden. Joe Biden, there you go. Anybody else? 
So in the middle is Dr. Anthony Fauci. You guys heard that name before? He's, a, he's one of the heads of NIH. He's the guy that is the, the leader of, of the COVID vaccination and COVID vaccine, leading it for Dr. Biden. But in this, right next to those guys, his second in command is one of my colleagues. Her name is Dr. Kizmikia Corbin. She's a PhD from Michigan. And she helped design the vaccine that you guys all are talking about. So she started exactly where you guys were. I remember I was in ninth grade, interested in science, and I didn't really know the pathways just yet. And it was mentors like myself that helped me allow, allow me to go to medical school. So it doesn't mean that you have to be doctors. I'm not here to make this whole room all physicians. I would love that, that'd be amazing. But you can also do other things in STEM as you guys know. You can work for the Eagles. You can be the person that engineers the helmets. Um, you can do stats for the 76ers, all right? So you get to hang around and even if you don't, you know, you don't grow to be seven foot tall, you can still be in the NBA. Um, how many of you guys play PS5? 2K? 2K? So the people that design that game are not hoopers at all. They are computer scientists who sit and write code and they design the game. But if you guys play basketball and you could write code, Maybe I wouldn't be so irritated with the game all the time. So you guys know where Chester, where the hospital is? You right know where that is? Right, it's right behind you, right next door. Um, this is one of our EVs um, where we basically do simulations, a couple of docs talking to paramedics who um, bring you into the hospital when you're sick. There's nurses that are around, anesthesiologists, CRNAs, these are all people that work into the hospital to make the hospital a better place. So what are you gonna do for a week? Basically what I'll do is we're gonna have a bus pick you up from here, take you to the hospital every morning, bring you back about 2 p.m. in the afternoon, we'll feed you and give you an experience in, in the sciences. This is, this is last year's group in New York actually uh, on their first day. So you guys know, you, ever, you guys have heard of a white coat ceremony, right? So there's something called a white coat ceremony, right? It sounds bad, but it's actually a good thing. So when I get this white coat, when I'm a medical student, there's a whole ceremony for our, my mom, for our parents, where they get to see you, get your white coat. What's your last name? Craig? Craig. So Dr. Craig. Clay, okay, I'm sorry. My, my ears are big, but I can't hear. It's very hard to hear. So Dr. Clay gets to walk down, you get a white coat, your family all cries because you finally made it. It's a really good to, uh, opportunity for you to start your medical career. This is a picture of all of our last year's doctors with Dr. Watkins, who's a colleague of mine, uh, with white coats and stethoscopes, and you guys will have that opportunity. So who are you gonna meet in this week? So part of it is not only having the access to the hospital and to the old operating room uh, and to some of the docs that are there, but we have people coming that are virologists. I have um, a colleague coming down who actually writes for the NFL and the NBA. He writes their COVID policies. Um, ob gyn docs, vascular surgeons who put vessels together when people are sick. Environmental scientists will be there. Um, I have a PhD coming. This is someone who engineers plants. Um, motivational speakers to sort of let you guys know uh, how to deal with some of these uh, the circumstances that make it difficult for us to, to get into the sciences. So, uh, who's also a social worker. Actually, my second in command, Margaret, is a social worker, who you'll see a lot if you uh, do come to the program. Some of the ED docs will be there, and then the guys in the short coats. So what differentiates us from medical students to attendings is they have short coats, they run around, and these are the guys that are gonna be helping me that you'll get to meet. They're probably the closest to you in age, and you'll get to meet those guys. This is an example of two of our students with you know, a helper nurse. They're sitting around, they're taking a history for one of our patients in one of the simulations. Uh, you'll take histories, get to meet simulation patients, hang IVs and things. We have all the instruments that will be in the hospital you'll have a little bit of access to. Some things, of course, will be off access. You won't be able to operate on a real human. I've gotten that question so far. Uh, You'll have to, you'll have some, you'll be able to come to our operating room, put on scrubs and actually get gowned up and see what we do in the OR if you've never been. You'll get to do some simulations. So this is two of our students taking a history, 
you get to see you know, some of the stuff that we look for as, as physicians, as nurses, as CRNAs. You get to take some histories from people that will be actors. This is how we learn in medical school. So part of it will be a frog dissection. And um, the frog dissection is basically how we learn anatomy. Uh, so we'll have frogs and I'll teach you guys some techniques that are um, surgical techniques and just point out some anatomy for you. This is one of our younger students dissecting a frog. And then part of what I do is something called robotic surgery. So robotic surgery is basically this console. Imagine it's being the, it's basically just a big PlayStation, the most expensive PlayStation that you've ever seen. So everything that I see is 3D and there's a robot with a patient on the table. And so basically you just play video games for three or four hours in order to operate. So that's new technology that you guys will see. So it's a very good experience. Part of this is we know that part of getting you guys into STEM, and maybe not the medical school, nursing school, social work, is just giving you these experiences, allowing you to have mentors. I want, you guys, I want to know you guys so that when you call me and say, hey, I want to go to college, I want to go to medical school, that I can say, I know you, you've been to STEM, I can write you a good letter of rec, because that's how people propel in my, uh, in my experience and in my field. They basically have outlets and they have experiences like this. Any questions? There you go. Um, when did you participate in high school to set you up for your medical career? Yeah, so actually I, I started off very young wanted to do medicine. My mother had me very young, and um, she actually was in nursing school when I was probably about that small. So my earliest memories are her going to nursing school, dissecting cats at home. They would bring the cats home back in the day and dissect them. And so I had access to docs and to nurses very early on. So by the time I was in high school, I pretty much knew already that I wanted to go into medical school. And because of those experiences when I was really young, I already knew that I needed to know a doc in order to get to where he was. And so um, you'll see, like, my colleagues or people that are in medical school have known and have had these type of programs since they were this small. And so I'm trying to catch us up in order so that you guys can have access to it. Because if they learn from this high and you guys don't learn to 12th grade, there's a, there's a step that's there. And you got to catch up. It can be hard for you guys to catch up at the end of the ball game. I want you guys to start off first quarter, right where they are with interest and so you do well in your class. Other questions? So I think um, what's, what kind of with, with Dr. Butler saying, if, if you are interested, not just to be a doctor, but, but any type of, of career in science, technology, this is, this is an opportunity for you to get a, an advantage over other students that might also be interested in those fields. It's competitive in order to get into medical school or to get into college programs that pre prepare you for medical school. So you might have an awesome GPA. You might have a 3.8 GPA or 3.7 GPA, but there are a lot of students that have 3.8 and 3.7 GPA. So when you're applying to college or applying to medical school, those, those folks who are making that decision about whether you get in or, or someone else gets in, they're also looking at what have you done outside of the classroom. If you're involved in extracurricular activities, but also what do you do during the summertime? Do you, uh, do you just chill, take the summer off, or do you get involved in a program like this at Crozier that, that, that furthers your education, that gives you more experience, that gives you the ability to meet and, and interact and work with, with doctors and professionals in the field? So this is, um, not only would it be fun and exciting, you get your lab coat ceremony, you get to meet, meet a bunch of cool people and dissect your frog and all that, but it's something that you can put on your resume, on your college application, that's gonna separate you from other students who might also have really good GPAs and, and interested in, in the same careers as you. It's a great opportunity that I hope as many STEM students as possible are involved in. You don't know what you don't know, right? Some of you, may have never been in a hospital, actually. Some of you guys have never met a nurse. Go ahead. Is it during school or like in the summer? If you... 
Is it during school or like in the summer? Summertime. So you guys will be out for two weeks, I believe. Yeah, so it's the last week in June. So our last day of school is like June, I don't know, June like 13th or something. And then so you'd, you'd be off for a week or so. And then this is this is the last week in June. So it'll be during the summertime. It's really important. So one of the things that we're going to talk about before we leave, it's really important. We're going to give you a flyer with those dates on it. So we all have plans during the summertime. So you're going to have those dates uh, June 27th to June 30th. We want to make sure that you talk to uh, talk to mom and dad at home, and let them know that you're interested in the program that you want to take part. So that when they're starting to plan what your summer looks like, they have those dates in mind, so that you're here in Chester and you're able to participate. So what I was saying was that I just wanted to expose you guys to these these things in the hospital, because again, it may change your trajectory a little bit. Um, it's a lot of people go into one field and then because they're not exposed to these things they realize really late that i want to do this i want to be a doctor and i had a 40 a 40 year old in my medical school because she didn't choose the right path she wasted 20 years doing the wrong thing because she didn't have exposure to it so basically this could change your trajectory and um maybe you do it and you hate it i don't know it also may lead you away from it so both ways, it's still just an experience for you guys. It's free, basically just an afternoon for a few days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And um, and then you figure out what you want to do. Do we have any more questions for Dr. Butler? Yes. How do you get in? How do you get in? That's a great question. So what you're going to have, so you got a lot of stuff to do when you leave here. One of the things that you're going to do is you're going to go on your ninth grade Google Classroom page and you're going to find a survey, okay? The survey is going to be about this presentation, what we learned here today. So everybody in this room is going to do that survey. Whether you are interested, very interested, or not that interested, you're going to do the survey. But the last question on the survey is going to ask you if you want to be a part of this program. If you think you want to be a part of the program, if you're sure, you're going to put yes, and then we're going to have the names of all the students that are interested, and we're going to follow up with more information. The other thing you want to do is this flyer that you're about to get right now, you're going to put it somewhere where you're not going to lose it, and you're going to make sure it goes home and gets to mom or dad tonight so that they see it, they see the information, and they see the dates. This is also in the weekly newsletter that your parents get. Uh, the last couple of weeks and it will be again next week but make sure that you hand them this make sure you let them know you're interested so that these dates uh, are on your family calendar any other questions no more questions all right so real quick one more time before we leave what you're going to do today, ninth grade, before, before you leave STEM today, before dismissal today, uh, first of all, Jay Sean, what are you going to find out? You're going to find out your GPA. So everyone in this room is going to know their GPA before they leave school today. The second thing that everybody in this room is going to do is the survey in your Google Classroom about this presentation. So your ninth grade Google Classroom, when you get back to your classroom right now, you're going to make sure that you complete that survey, especially indicating if you're interested in this program this summertime. So you're going to do those two things. So when I see you this afternoon, I'm going to say, what's your GPA? And did you finish your survey? You're going to give me a number for your GPA, and you're going to say, yes, I'm done the survey. Everybody got it? We all got it? Guys, let's thank our special guests again one more time. Thank you very much. Take your flyer. We're headed back to second period. Thank you very much, ninth grade.